It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And we've got some history in this battle of AFL alumni. It's the Cincinnati Bengals and the Los Angeles Chargers on Sunday night primetime. From the West Coast, we're coming to you live from the NFL's newest and the world's most expensive stadium. Step the yard so far here at Inglewood, California. Thanks for joining us, everyone. With my partner, Brock Heward, I'm Kate Scott. And like so many matchups in the NFL, Brock, our focus goes right to the quarterbacks in this one. Both of these guys, players who've been around the league now for some time, they definitely established themselves as veterans who know how to win football games. Yeah, I think the word of the day, Kate, is definitely experience. Two yeah. guys who've been through the season several times over have seen a lot at this point in their career and been through quite a bit on the field. All that experience is stored up there right between the ears. <laughs> and the one who is more skilled at leveraging that experience more likely is going to come away with the win. Here to begin this one is Cameron Dicker. And here we go from L.A. Here's Charlie Jones with the return. And he's going to make this to the 28 before going down. So here come the Bengals, ready for their opening drive. They're led out by a motivated player coming off an injury. One of the game's great young QBs, Joe Burrow. I think it's fair to say, Kate, the only thing that has slowed down Joe Burrow in his NFL career is that injury. But just like in his rookie year, major injury to that wrist a season ago got in his way. This guy is so smooth, so calm, so poised. He didn't let the injury in his rookie year affect him, uh-uh. Remember the next year they went to the Super Bowl? And those Bengals were sure hoping for a repeat this time around. Now a shotgun hand off to Brown. And that's good yardage there with a new set of downs to boot. Ooh, I like that call. I really, I really like it with those sticks. You can keep them on the sidelines and you get more than enough to get the first down. and 10 from the 41. They'll run again with Brown. And he gets him around six there. That's Denzel Perryman in on the stop. Give him around six. That's going to make it second and four. That's a run that you'll take the result in the NFL every time. A nice play, a solid game, but it's also a run that you know and you may come back to because if you were that close to breaking off an explosive one, you'd really break the backs of the defense. Here's Brown again. And he's caught behind the line for a loss. This is one of those plays that I wish we had the huddle mic'd up, Kate, because I can assure you that offensive line in their own way is telling that running back, sorry, we did not give you any chance. The Chargers into a nickel set third down. Shotgun Burrow. And he won his man too much there, Brock. Incomplete. Four down coming up. Can't cover it much better than that. Really well covered feet in that play. There just simply was not a window for him to sneak that goal in. The Bengals send out the punting unit. Darius Davis returning for the Chargers. Ooh, it's away, but he knows he missed it that one. Headed for the sideline. And this one adventures out of play on the fly. The question is where it's marked. Looks like they'll say the 17-yard line. So now we'll get a look at the other offense as the Chargers take the field. They'll be let out by the fifth-year pro who can really fill up a stat sheet, Justin Herbert. Hey, let's be honest. The only reason the Chargers drafted in the top five was because Justin Herbert wasn't available all season long. An injury cut short his year. But it really didn't cut short his production while he was playing. Still over 3,000 yards and 20 touchdowns. Kid, I can tell you, this is one guy that I love. I mean, I love to watch throw a football. First run of the game for J.K. Dobbins. Runs into traffic and hits a wall. No gain. The play brought to an end by Logan Wilson. No gain there that time, and it's second and ten. Made it all look so simple, didn't he? That linebacker sorting right through the traffic, finding the runner. That's instincts come to life. Herbert from the gun. To his back, J.K. Dobbins. And a nice game here, but it stopped short of the first. I call 
this quarterback's best friend. Some call it a safety valve. Some call it automatic. But it's sure nice as a quarterback when you got a trusty running back over the middle of the field that you can depend on. Third and just two to go. They run the counter with Dobbins. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. If only this defense could look like that on every play, Kate. They were angry, motivated, focused. And they took that anger out on him and this offense, forcing a fourth down. So on fourth down, here's J.K. Scott on to punt it away for the Chargers. He sends this away, and oh, this is going to be a field flipper. Fair catch called for, and he brings it in. Looks like right at about the 29-yard line. So no return on that punt. And it'll be Bengals football. First and 10 now from the 30. Burrow out of the shotgun. Making it harder than it needs to be right there. Just get the catch first, guarantee some yards, and then worry about escaping the defenders and getting upfield. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. They put a receiver in motion right. On second and ten, throw again. Finds a man right side. And he'll get up near the 38-yard line before going down. The goal of that little drag route is to get him for at least a minimal game with space to add after that. That picked up a good chunk, and it was nearly a big play. Third down, one yard to go. Burrow from the gun. Complete beyond the marker. And he's going to be brought down at the 42. It's a four-yard gain, and that's going to get him across the marker and earn the first. You know, they call that the money down for a reason, because you're just simply not going to last long in the NFL if you don't convert a good portion of your third downs. It's the money down. And nice to see them roll the dice and continue the series. To throw again, it's Burrow. Catch made by Chase Brown. And the tackle's made just beyond midfield at the 48. I know that completion doesn't move the chains, but I love it nonetheless. You make sure that defense is aware of every eligible player going out, and this time it was out in the backfield with the running back that shows he's adept at catching it as well. Burrow setting up the play action. And that one is dropped. Such great work to get all by himself, but he can't haul in the gimme, and that deep shot is missed. Wow. Still inches to go on third down. Burrow setting the throw. That's caught for the first. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. You're not going to last long in the National Football League if you don't convert a good chunk of your third downs. Nice find there to continue the series. First down now, ball at the 39-yard line. From the gun, again to Brown. And he drives that front backward on a gate of four. Now after the run, we see some trainers headed out for an injured player who was shaken up. Second and six coming up here.
from the 34. Jones reels it in. He's corralled after a modest four-yard gain. Stopped by Deion Henley. This is one of those kind of win-win situations. Both sides feel good. Is the offense, I get a completion. I get a win. Is a defense, I keep everything in front of me. I make the tackle for a short game. I get a win, too. Sometimes you can't get to win-win. Take him down, but there's a flag on the play. And no surprise here. They declined the flag because the play got a first down, so they're going to happily let it stand. This drive just keeps on moving after the penalty resets that marker. First and ten now. Here's Burrow. Defender runs right as the ball does, and the hit knocks it free. Incomplete. Ball and defender run to the exact same time there. And now they face second down. See the pass, time up your hit, and jar that ball loose. Not a lot of players are hanging on to a well-placed hit like that one. Burrow throwing again on second and ten. Got a man, it's Kaziki. And he gets this down to the 13-yard line. Pickup of 12 on that play. And it sets up a Cincinnati first down. I'm sure, Coach, a play caller doesn't mind making the job a little bit easier. You know, play calling's a lot simpler and easier when you count on the offense to move the chains on those early downs. Straight ahead, it's Brown. He only gets this one down to the nine. It's a game of three for him. That brings up second and seven. Hey, we know running the ball in the NFL is hard, and that play pretty indicative of it. Here's the key, though. At the end of the game, those type of plays got to be in the minority, and the majority have got to do some damage. Burrow, back to throw. Tucked in the goal line. And he's able to get it to the two before the stop. A nice gain of eight there, and that brings him to first and goal. That's just great instincts. Go air it out on second down rather than just play conservative and run it. They hit a weak point in the coverage and don't need to worry about third down at all. Might be trying to power this across, Brock. They've got three tight ends out there. It's first and goal. Brown. Has nothing on that run. They stand strong and stop him at the two. You know, Kate, these are the situations in training camp that I love more than anything to watch. You've learned so much about a football team in these goal-to-go situations. You know you got to protect that goal line, and the defense, well, it did the job on first down. More to come. And off headed left to Brown. He runs it across. Touchdown! The Bengals take a 6-0 lead in the first quarter. Well, we've been saying it for years, Brock. If at first you don't succeed, try, try that run again. You're exactly right. It's going to take more than one stop to deter those offensive coaches from calling another run play. They've got such faith in their group up front to leverage right at the point of attack and punch it in on the second time around. Evan McPherson on to try the extra point. Extra point sent right down the middle. And the Bengals will jump out to a 7-0 lead.
Grime starts out with a first and ten. Beginning on the ground here with Dobbins. And he found some running room for a nice game. It's an eight-yard pickup, and they're going to have second and two next. Well, that doesn't net a first down. You get yards like that in the run game, you will take it in the NFL. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. From the 31. for seven yards and it brings up an la first down and those are the completions they rely on from their passing game markers reset ball at the 37 now an inside handoff to dobbins and he made a bit for midfield there but stopped on his own side at the 49 they'll move the chains after that pickup of 12. Okay, don't think for a second this is time you step off the gas. You can feel this defense, right? They're on their heels. And now's the best chance to go push the envelope and get aggressive. Going to the ground again on first. And he'll cross the 50 and start pushing onto the opposing side of the field. Give him five on that carry, bringing up second and five. A humble five to six yard gain on the ground. Not a huge gain. Not a game changing play by any means. But one that keeps you on schedule and takes some of the starch out of that front seven. On second down, here's Dobbins. And the defense is all over this one for a big loss. What was supposed to move the chains or at least make third down easier to handle instead? Well, did the exact opposite here, Kate. Now makes this third down a whole lot trickier to figure out. Extra DB out there for the Bengals. Third down coming. To the air this time. Herbert. He just throws this one away. This is why we hear about closing speed so often when you evaluate players. You know, once he senses the pressure, he's getting rid of that ball. It takes a player who can close quickly to get to him before it's released and alter that throw. J.K. Scott on the punt. And this punt is out of bounds with no chance at a return. Looks like they're going to spot it at the 30. transition from college to the NFL. Not every run is going to be a big play. Some of them, well, they're just destined to end in a minimal game, and some of them will set up that critical play action for later. Play action now. Burrow. That's complete. Here's Brown. And he's going to go down right along the midfield strike. So before they can set up for another play, we've hit the end of the first quarter. Neither side separating much so far. We're back to SoFi right after this. Time for our second quarter. It'll be Bengals football to begin. They've got first and ten here, looking to add to their lead. Burrow. That's Kasicki. He's got it. And he drives this across midfield and down into enemy territory. He's just one of those guys, Kate. Even when he's not open, he's still a target thanks to that physicality and his ability to just play bowling ball. They don't like forcing into coverage, but sometimes when you got a bully like him that can create space, you just find a way to get him the ball. Forty-eight. 
quick slam. Here's Kasiki. And they'll manage to contain him after about a six-yard pickup. Tackle made by Elijah Molden. You know, I'm really not sure if that was an intentionally brave play to challenge double coverage or just simply not seeing the two defenders. Either way, what a tremendous throw and catch that earns some momentum. Throwing now, third and two. That is targeted Tiggins. And he takes it inside the 35 before heading out. That one gains seven. And it'll be first down, Bengals. That's what we call situational football. You spend all week working on your nickel passing game package to take advantage of third downs just like that. On first down, here's Burrow. That won't be caught outright. It's incomplete. It was there. He just couldn't corral it. And it sets up second down. I'm not sure if he was hearing footsteps or he just had a surprise break in concentration. It's so unusual at this level to see a drop pass unless there's a hit involved. Out of the shotgun, Burrow. Into the hands of Kasiki, complete! And they bring him down after the play reaches the 26. The goal of running that drag route is to get it to him for at least a minimal game with space to add after that. He picked up a good chunk, and there was nearly room to add even more. Third and a lone yard coming up. Burrow out of the shotgun. Connecting on the slant. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. You know, Kate, they say a dog is a man's best friend. A tight end that moves the chains on third down, that's a QB's best friend. A new set of downs forthcoming. It's first and ten. to the air now. Caught quickly on the slant. And that tackle stops him after a solid game. Good luck defending that short yardage slant. Just not going to happen. There's a reason. This is a go-to play for just about any quarterback in every situation. After a good pickup, they've got second and four. Burrow from the gun. Allen falls to the turf. Couldn't hang on. It's incomplete. He can't hang on to the pass. And now they need to get four on third down. Oh, that drop is such a bummer because it ruins the payoff of such a well-designed play, Kate. Got the man open, beat the coverage, and then you got to go finish it. you got to go make that catch. I will say, keep that one in mind. They could revisit that play in the future. From the left side, and Gasicki has it. And they'll get this down nearly to the end zone. Instead, stopped at the two. It's a real solid pickup, 12 yards, and it rewards him with a first and goal. I'm not sure how this defense let that guy slip through him like that. On third down, nonetheless, he took that snap as an opportunity. And man, did he make an impact play. Four downs now to get in. Here's first and goal. Brown has nothing on that run. They stand strong and stop him at the two. Hey, I get it on first and goal. Right? A lot of teams like to be conservative and, and limit risk. Even if a run is stopped short, you still got two, sometimes three downs to play with. Ball at the two here for second and goal. It's a gain of a yard, but they needed just a couple more inches. Third down. That offensive group really hoped he was going to get it all right there. Reset it back to first down. But instead, defense, well, they're not going to let anything come easy. And their fight is giving them a chance to stall things out. And throw them short. He couldn't hang on. Brock, it looked like a touchdown, but it slips right through his hands. And now it's fourth down. Oh, that is going to haunt him. A drop touchdown in the end zone. We'll see how good his mental toughness is. If he can move past it quickly and make an impact for them later. Here we go. Fourth and goal inside the one. Trying for it with Burrow. And he's going to score. 
touchdown, Cincinnati! The Bengals pull out in front further, 13 zip. T. Higgins, the touchdown. Man, Brock, that defense held up three straight plays. They just couldn't come up with the one final stop they needed to get off the field. And how about this offense, courage of the offense, to run it back for one more snap and make the adjustments on fourth and goal to finally punch it in. Quite the many little chess match we just saw play out over those last four plays. McPherson at the point after. Right down the middle, it's good. And the Bengals double their lead to 14. Here's McPherson on to handle the kickoff. Returning it from the four. He's brought down at what looks like the 24-yard line. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. Now Herbert to throw. First there to grab it. He's only going to manage to get back to the line. Remain Pratt with the play defensively. And the defense was all over that throw. Able to stop it right at the line. They could smell that one coming, and they sniffed it out in a hurry. Second and ten. Need to get some positive yardage here. They go play action. Here's Herbert. That pushes him back, third down, coming up. This is a time where you get in that huddle and you just look at one another and say, hey, let's get back in rhythm. Get back in rhythm. Get something good to feel good about. Sure, you'd love to get the first down, but more than anything, just find a positive play after a huge sack. Got to figure out this third down here. Working from the gun here, it's Herbert. He puts some power on a deep one left. And the defender redirects that deep shot. Nicely done, incomplete. The ability to track the ball. Right, ball skills isn't just knocking it away, and that's a beautiful job there, Kate. But ball skills is also being able to track a ball on a deeper throw like that. If he doesn't swat it away, we're looking at a huge game. The Chargers lined up in punt formation. And he's certainly been staying busy. Once again, he's out to punt and sends this flying. Calls for the fair catch, and he's got it at the 34-yard line. We don't get a return out of that punt. And they'll get ready to go on offense. Here's first and ten from the 34. Looking to throw Burrow. It is cut left side. And he's down after getting this up to the 41. That is a textbook first down completion. Sets up second and very manageable. It creates space to take that shot downfield. Second and three now. From the 41. Finds him over the middle. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. It sure seemed like he knew exactly where he was going with that right off the snap. First and ten from a yard shy of midfield. Tackle at the 38. 
A nice gain of 13 yards as it brings up a first down. I love throwing on first down. And when you see a first down pass just like that, it's taking advantage of a matchup you plan for and you go out and execute. New set of downs for him at the 38. First and 10 now. Here's Burrow. He was trying to fit it into a window in the zone coverage, but by the time he let it go, oh, that lane had closed and someone was there to make a play on it. What you're trying to do in zone coverage defensively is make that quarterback see a window that isn't actually there. And as soon as he takes the bait and sends it over the middle, well, you got one, two, three defenders all there in range to go pick it off. Here's first and ten from the 34. They'll start on the ground with Dobbins. And that's good yardage with a new set of downs. It's got to be so demoralizing as a defense when you go up against a running back who just keeps those legs churning like a piston in an engine. And that effort's contagious. This entire offense is getting a boost when he busts those tackles. First and ten. Ball set up at the 48. Running it again with Dobbins. And he's going to manage a lone yard on that drive up the gut. Stop made by Sam Hubbard. Just a gain of one, and that brings up second and nine. Okay, that's a run that's whole hum on the stat sheet, but if you see a bigger play on the ground later on, it'll largely be because of a play just like that one, softening up the front and opening the door for a bigger gap in the future. Here we go, second and nine. This is real in by Joshua Palmer. And he's going to be drugged down, looks like, at that 37-yard line. He had to pick up a 14 yards as the chains reset. You know, they really love that drag route because he's one of those guys that can count on not only to make the catch, but create after the catch. If they don't close on him quickly, he can add a lot of yards before someone tracks him down. Herbert on first down. Keeps this one for the back of the end zone. That's much too high out of the end zone. Incomplete. You know, ball skills are not just a selling point for receivers entering the draft. Teams want defenders, especially in this day and age of the passing game, who can make plays on the ball, too, especially on these deeper throws. He doesn't swat that one away. We could be looking at a huge game. Second and ten now. That's going to be an incomplete pass on the throw to the right. Hey, I know nobody's perfect. And all you have to do is listen to me and how many words I screw up. <laughs> but you certainly expect those throws of that length to be 100%. They've got to be borderline automatic in this offense. Last pass unsuccessful, and they have third down here. Herbert throwing again. As long as these are the results he's getting, they're going to be just fine with him calling his own number. He does such a good job of seeing the field and knowing when it's his time to take it himself. All right, I'll set up now. First and ten. Working inside the red zone. It was there, but he couldn't hang on. That's incomplete. Well covered on that play. Really not a large window for him to sneak that throw in. So after the incompletion, here comes the second down call. Straight ahead. Here's Dobbins. Well, Brock, he found himself some space to work, and from there, wow, all at 
athleticism as he made his way into the end zone. You got that right, Kate. Just that speed. You gotta have some different gear when you get down here to the red zone. It's hard to score rushing touchdowns. And that running back sees the open space. He sees the green grass, and he finishes it off with six. Now it's Cameron Dicker on for the extra point. The point after splits the upright. And the Chargers chop the lead in half. It's down to seven. Just like that, we're back to a one-possession ball game as the kickoff is away. On the return, here's Jones. And a decent return ends as they bring him down inside the 30. They're out and set, first and ten. just a little bit late and gave the defense time to close, deliver a pop, and knock that ball loose. So after that prior incompletion, we've got third down. Throwing his burrow. Complete beyond the marker. And he's going to be blocked down at the 42. They get an even 10 on that play. And it sets up a Cincinnati first down. You know, it sure seems like he knew exactly where he was going with that before the snap. That's a pre-snap decision that led to a post-snap first down. They'll head up first and 10 from the 42. Play action now, Burrow. And that's incomplete, but it uses a laundry on the field. Let's see what this flag is all about. He was too far downfield at the time of the pass. Got to stay within a yard of the line. That'll back him up. So after the five yards are marched off, here's first and 15. Burrow setting the throw. Higgins makes the catch. And he'll get it up to the 44. It takes a certain level of fearlessness, craziness, to work over the middle of the field in this league. You're fighting through guys as you go, and all the while, you know you can take a lift at any time. Eight yards to go. Well, let's see how they approach this second down. To throw again, it's Burrow. They've got a man, it's Kasiki. He gets forward, and that's about four yards. Tackle made by Elijah Molden. with hopefully a much better job finishing the catch. 
Hunter takes the field on fourth down, and he sends this one flying. And this will fly out of bounds to deny a return. They're going to mark it a little before the 20. Offense ready to begin this drive. First and 10. Herbert from the gun. Catch made by Char. And he's able to get across the 25 before stepping out. Every once in a while, it's fine to be conservative on first down, especially when you get enough to stay on schedule and get a little something coming out of it, too. Halfway to the marker. It's second and five. From the 27. Escapes the pocket. He takes it himself. Timeout call by the Chargers. They're first. They'll have two left to work with before halftime. They're set up at the 35 now. From the pistol, it's Herbert. He's on the move. It's out of harm's way after stringing together some nice yards on that run. L.A. uses a timeout here. It's second. And they still have one in their pocket for what's left of this half. Way to the marker. It's second and five. Shotgun snap to Herbert. This ball is caught by Palmer. And he goes out. Just need one more step there to reach midfield. That play goes for eight yards, and it keeps this drive moving. I know I could sound like a broken record when I talk about timing and getting the ball out on time and on rhythm, but these outcuts, it is so imperative, and the best of them make it look oh so easy. Here's Herbert, first and ten. And it's caught. This is Lad McConkey. And he'll have it down to the 44-yard line. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. Working from the gun here, it's Herbert. Gets everything he has under this throw. That one is incomplete. The clock now down to 16 seconds remaining. They don't complete a high percentage of these, but even the incomplete deep shots serve a purpose. It keeps the defense honest. Knowing that they overcommit close, they could get burned. No connection on the last play, and out third down. Herbert's a throw once more. And even on third down, he sees no choice other than to get rid of it. Not the play they wanted. It's going to be fourth down. And this is why scouts talk about a player's closing speed, Kate. You know, once he senses the pressure, he's getting rid of that ball. It takes a player who can close quickly to get to him before it's released. And that sure altered the throw. Punt team is on now, and they get this away. And they won't be able to return this one as it sails out of bounds. Time's going to run out on the half. So we're at halftime in this Sunday night matchup. Now we'll go coast to coast. Jonathan Coachman standing by in our Orlando studios for the EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Kate. Thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right. Thank you, Coach. And we are back and about set to begin the second half.
Here's McPherson on to handle the kickoff. Here's a return from the seven. Finds some space. He's past the 30. And it's a nice return here. They'll tackle him shy of the 35. Well, that's exactly the way you want to come out of the locker room to begin the second half. And really, Kate, this third phase of the game, the special teams, you just see the boost and the energy they can give to their team when they deliver a nice return to start this second half. First and ten. Here's Herbert. Finds a seam down the middle. He's down. Looks like they made the stop at the 46-yard line. They get 20 yards out of the play and move the chains. <laughs> that is what elite offenses are all about. Why worry about three downs when you need only one? Move the chains in one play and keep driving that defense backwards. One play in, and this drive is already in the enemy territory. A give to Dobbins to start the third. And he'll push this upfield and earn them a new set of downs. Yeah, you want to get about five yards to carry? put together runs like that and I'll tell you what else a run like that does Kate that sets up the play action right when you really just gouge and gash a defense like that the next time you run that action they're going to be thinking running the ball to go right over their head this five shot complete and he stops now we need to hear what this flag is all about Shotgun snap, looking to throw. Able to hit Palmer, complete. And he's able to get this down to the 36. Okay, one thing I learned from the late, great Mike Leach is, yeah, the system was called air raid, but it wasn't just attacking downfield. His philosophy, and it played out right there, is you have to attack every inch of the field, both vertically and horizontally, without routes or in routes, just like that. with a nice 21 yards. And the Chargers will have a first. Nice to see that connection, that chemistry working between the two of them. They'll run on first down with Dobbins. And the middle holds. They don't get anything on the run. No progress on first down, and that'll bring up second and 10. You want to see the term read and react with a little video in the football dictionary? That's it. Second and ten. Need to get some positive yardage here. Here's Herbert. The throw is caught. And he has it down in the eight-yard line on the play. Just get this guy touches. I don't care how. I don't care when. Just find unique ways to get this running back the ball. And over time, he's going to make you pay. All plays on the table here for third and three. Trying to throw here out of the gun. So they punch it in for six, Brock, and now a conversion away from tying this game back up. This one just has the feel, doesn't it? The makings of a one-score game in the fourth quarter that could go either way. Dicker on now for the PAT. Extra point set right down the middle. And the Chargers tie things up at 14.
Riker all lined up and ready to boot it away. On the return, here's Jones. Coverage team gets him down at the 26-yard line. staying on schedule. That kind of completion right there on first down, or it opens up the entirety of the playbook for second down, and third and short in your back pocket, and get even more aggressive and take that shot. Second and three now. Burrow from the gun. Fails out of the pocket quick. He's on the move. And he slides down with enough to pick up that first. That's 16 on the pickup. And it'll be first down, Bengals. You know, Kate, back in the day, we had a slip and slide to practice for moments just like that. Actually practicing how to slide and get out of harm's way. Nice gain on the play. And denied that defense yet another chance to take a shot on it. On first down, here's Burrow. Finds his man, Chase. And he reaches midfield and starts driving into Chargers territory. That's what you call efficiency. Exactly what you're looking for in first down. Textbook. It sets up second and very manageable, and it creates that space if you want to take a shot downfield. After a good pickup, they've got second and four. Looking to throw, Burrow. Splits a couple of defenders and completes it. And he's brought down for a loss. I'll tell you this, you don't want to make a living throwing into double coverage, but double coverage and still finding a way to beat the defense and haul it in. That's not a situation many players win, and a lot of quarterbacks willing to make that throw and trust their receiver to get it done. Very sure it's Burrow. They dropped it. Got to secure that pick before you think of anything else. They'll send out the punting unit. And he finally gets a hold of one here. This is hit far. And this one gets out of bounds. It was pushing some distance towards the goal line, but gets out at the five. They'll get this drive started. First and ten. Shotgun handoff for Dobbins. He's charged towards the line. It's right around three yards. As an offense in these situations, Kate, you can feel your own goal line, and you're not going to risk putting the ball in the air. So that means you're going to run it, and you're going to buy whatever breathing room you can. Second down now, seven to go. Again, they'll run with Dobbins. Gets it ahead, has about five yards. Remain Pratt with the play defensively. Five yards on the play. They could just do that again. Third and two coming up. That run's not going to turn many heads, but at the end of the year, I promise you, if you average over five yards a run, you're going to be a pro bowler. Short yardage situation here. It's third and two. Going for the first with Dobbins. And he's caught behind the line for a loss. These edge defenders in the league today, Kate, they've got so much on their list to do. A huge to-do list. they got to get to the passer. they got to set an edge. And they got to stop that run game, not just on the end of the line, but in that case, right in the middle of the field. Their punter making his way out now. And this is going to be his fourth effort tonight. And he gets it away from his end zone. And before that return amounts to much, they bring him down. That one an impressive 57-yard kick. 
And it'll be good field position for them as they take over right at midfield. Good starting field position awaits the Bengals as they get set for first and ten. Play action now. Burrow. Has a man. It's Brown. He'll cross the 50 and start pushing onto the opposing side of the field. Ooh, he knew he was going to pay for throwing that. I knew it from up here in the booth watching that happen. That's an experienced quarterback. If that first primary target isn't there, make sure you find your safety valve. And that got them some yards, so taking that shot, well, it was not for nothing. Out of the shotgun, Burrow. We had to off a great defensive play to jar it loose, incomplete. Tough one to retain through that hit. And that makes it third down. As a defense, you got to see the pass. you got to time up your hit, and you got to jar that ball loose. Not a lot of offensive players are hanging on the back line through a well-placed hit. Third down, here's Burrow. That one's cut along the left side line. And he's out of bounds after reaching the 25-yard line. It's a 21-yard gain. And it sets up a Cincinnati first down. They like to say it's about the Jimmys and the Joes. I think that's about the X's and the O's. That's a well-drawn-up completion that nets them the first down. The drive picks up here, first and ten. The throw again. It's Burrow. That one falls to the turf. Couldn't hang on. It's incomplete. Had that one, but just couldn't see it through. So it'll be second down. You know, I'm not sure if he was hearing footsteps or just had a surprise break in concentration. It's so unusual to see one dropped unless there's a hit involved. chance on third down key. Take at least a little bite of the big meal between them and the first down marker. And that, that should make this upcoming call a little less daunting. Extra defender in the secondary now for the Chargers. Third down coming. Burrow. That's complete. Here's Brown. Stiff arm success. That one goes for 15 and now they're going to have first and goal. This dude just simply got a nose for the marker no matter how they get him the ball. Kate, okay, hand it to him, and he sniffs out that first down. Get it to him on a screen, and it's no different. He surges ahead and keeps this drive moving. They'll break the huddle and come up on first and goal. Straight ahead, it's Brown. Crosses the goal line for the Cincinnati touchdown. The Bengals take a third quarter lead. It's what every player who scores a touchdown wants to do, Brock. He wants to get right back there and put another six on the board. I've never met an NFL player content with one end zone trip in a game. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, if you're content, you're not making it to this league. You get one, you instantly think of another, and the fortunate few are able to actually deliver on it. McPherson at the point after. Right down the middle, it's good. And the Bengals break that tie and now lead by seven. Contributions like that out of your kickoff returner it is such a boost to an offense. This is about showing no fear. Hitting the lane hard, a determined run back, and setting your offense up with great field position. So the Chargers start off with good field position as they get ready for first and ten. Herbert from the gun. Completed to Hurst. 
And he's tackled after getting this to the opposing 46. You'll often hear it said, in my life experience, it's true. The NFL is a game of matchups, so much more than any level. And these tight ends, we see it time and again, are such a matchup nightmare down the field. Let's see what they want to do here, partner. It's second and inches. From the 46. Chuck there, right in. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. Move the chains. Got to move their chains. Build momentum to keep that defense on its heels. First and 10 from the 41. On the play fake, it's Herbert. Flushed out of the pocket. And the defenders are there to get him at the line. Stop made by Sam Hubbard. What an excellent job there by the defense. Once he gets out on the move to be able to corral and contain him and not give up any yards. So often the unit can't keep that contained in a play like that. They go for a big game. Second and ten. Need to get some positive yardage here. Shotgun snap to Herbert. Has him on the quick hitter. And they're going to haul him down a step before the 30, right at the 31. Sometimes you're looking to push the ball down the field. But as I've said before, the crumbs lead to a cookie. And you never go broke taking a profit, and those big tight ends will often find you those easy check down yards. Here we go, third and less than a yard. This is Dobbins. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. Third and inches, and you hate to see that run go backwards. I just take myself back to a huddle, and you know you're imploring your guys, listen, just give us a little bit of a push, and we will move the sticks instead. Well, the defense is energized with that stop. Offense staying out there. It's fourth and one. He's back to throw. Hurst there to grab it. And they drag him down just in time. He's shy of that marker. We've got a turnover on down. You know, these fourth down plays are all about trust. You lean into what you do best. Unfortunately, with the lack of execution, you're going to throw that one off the playlist. Sunday night. The Bengals with it. They've got the lead, but this game is close. They'll head up first and ten from the 42. Burrow out of the shotgun. It's incomplete. Should have been a catch downfield, but off his hands and to the ground it goes. I think if you look up in phase in the defensive encyclopedia, that is a picture-perfect form of it. He was all over him in coverage, really forcing the incompletion. Couldn't connect on first. It's second down. Burrow setting up the play action. So stuck, Kate, on decision making being the ball in the hands of where's he throwing it? The ball in the hands of the passing game, and what kind of decision is he gonna make when in reality, in this game in the fourth quarter, decision making is also knowing when to salvage a play, salvage that real estate that's so important to try to play a little add-on and make this a two-score game. That's that. That's not gonna help in that decision at all. 
Third and long, here's Burrow. It was there, but it couldn't hang on. That's incomplete. Looks like a bit of a concentration drop on that one. And that brings up fourth and long. You know, the goal on a lot of these short throws is to simply let the receiver create some yards after the catch. That yak. I think he was thinking about the yak before he actually secured the catch. Fourth down, and on comes the punt team, and the kick's away. And he'll bring in this fair catch at the 13. No return on that punt. And the Chargers take possession. The Chargers are getting the ball back as J.K. Dobbins runs out there. And the running lanes, and they've been hazardous. Not quite the decorated collection of highlights from him that we're going to look at here. Those big plays, the explosive runs where he leads an offense, just haven't been there for him in this one. And the drive will start out with a first and ten. Working from the gun here, it's Herbert. Short throw is dropped. This one's incomplete. You know, anytime you see a player tapping his chest, I'm not a great lip reader, but I know exactly what that says. My bad. My fault. Quarterback delivers him a good ball. He knows that's one he should have caught. No dice on that prior pass. Here's second down. Herbert now off the play fake. play to pick it and put his team on the doorstep for six no question about it the highlight was already playing in his head he's at the 10 the five the two and then bam he is stopped at the one and that pick six disappears it is definitely highlight for him but i definitely know when they watch that take his teammates are going to give him quite a ribbing for getting caught at the one no doubt got it off that interception brock let's see if they can pay that off with points here's first and goal From the gun, again to Brown. Is in. Touchdown, Cincinnati. The Bengals go up by two scores as they try to put this one away. Well, Brock, you know this better than most. In baseball, it's three strikes and you're out. I know you experienced that a lot. But on the gridiron, you're feeling pretty happy, right? If you can strike the end zone three times in one game. Yeah, I'd rather go hockey and soccer. That's just a positive guy <laughs> in me. They call that a hat trick. It's worth celebrating. You. And yeah, they should celebrate this effort. McPherson at the point after. The point after splits the uprights. And the Bengals double their lead to 14. Here's McPherson on to handle the kickoff. Fielded at the seven. And this return gets to the 30 before he stopped. They're out and set. First and ten. Interception, last drive, doesn't deter them. They're going right back to the air. He finds McConkey. And he's brought down after a nice gain and a first down. Sure seems like he knew exactly what he wanted, and he got it going right where he wanted to with the ball off the snap. Great start to the drive. They're up in the neighborhood of midfield after just one play. Throwing on first is Herbert. 
And disaster averted. He knocks away the deep ball incomplete. Trying to force one through there. And we'll see what they do here on second down. Read and react. Read and react. Read and react. Got to read where the quarterback's eyes are going. And you got to react as it begins to throw to get to a spot and knock it away. Second and ten. Herbert trying again. Too much lead on that throw. That falls incomplete ahead of his target. Couldn't make the connection. Was looking for Lad McConkey. And that's going to leave him with a tough third and long. You really want those throws to be like clockwork for your offense. Every team needs to hit passes in that short to intermediate range to effectively move the ball. And they send a man in motion. On third down, Herbert on target to Dobbins. And he's going to be at midfield now as he gets out of bounds. It's plays like that, Kate, right wrong. Where I sit and judge a defense. I judge the awareness. I judge how well that coordinator's got him equipped to see what's going on on the field. And not just see it, but attack it. And they devoured that screen game on third down. Desperation time here on fourth. That's cut down the marker. And they finally bring him down, but that is a big game and a new set of downs. One of their biggest plays of the game, and it comes on a fourth down gamble. Yeah, I love that effort, adding as much as possible to that catch while earning the first down. That's called yards after catch, and it's what coaches want from all their pass catchers on the roster. What a spot for a big play, huh, Brock? It has him well into the red zone now with first and ten. Running left, it's Dobbins, and he's brought down for a loss. Well, he was supposed to be the one who chipped away a few and got a new set of downs started right in rhythm. Instead, he's now forced to pick himself from behind the line thanks to a great effort defensively. All right, here we go. Second down. Dobbins gets it off the option. And they'll stop him after a short gain to the 13. They get those two yards back, but now it leaves him with third and ten. You know, they got some positive yards. That's a good thing. But too many plays like that, it just is too hard to pile together, get first downs against the better defenses in this league. Tight end in motion left. Third and long for him here. This one's caught. Decent gain here, but short of the first. You can earn your money in the NFL in all sorts of different ways, but defensively, in a league where you're just not hitting as much in training camp, you're not tackling as much as they got to in the old days, when you can make a play in the open field, keep them short like that, I promise you some money will follow. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And that'll get him back to 11. That field goal didn't do a lot on the scoreboard to make it a more attackable deficit, but it does create a sense of urgency here for this defense to get off the field. Dicker all lined up and ready to boot it away. Brown with a return here. And pretty solid field position starting out here, Brock. He's tackled at the 29. The Bengals, then running back Chase Brown, getting sent to begin another drive here. And they have leaned on him to get this offense to the end zone in the game, and he's delivered. He's hit Peter three times, part of a really nice game for him so far, Brock. Been returning good value on the looks that he's been getting. Offense ready to begin this drive. First and ten. Brown on the inside give. And he gets a few on the plunge forward. You know, not a ton of yards, but still showing that commitment to the ground game. The type of run that keeps the defense from loading up in coverage and focusing entirely on that passing game. 
Second down now, seven to go. They kick the running back in motion. Here's second and seven. Short pass brought in. And he'll go down and we'll say right at the 39-yard line. That's good for seven yards. And it sets up a Cincinnati first down. Out of the shotgun, Burrow. Completed over the middle. And he has it up towards midfield before he's taken down at the 47. After a good pickup, they're set up with second and short. Play action now, Burrow. Higgins makes the catch. And they get this down roughly to the 34-yard line. It's a gain of 19 on the play. And it'll be first down, Bengals. I may love watching a great thrower, but I love watching a well-done route too, Kate. Make that guy think you're trying to stack him only to drop your hips and cut right inside. So good work to help reset those chains. Here's first and 10 from the 34. Man in motion out of the slot. On first down, here's Burrow. Completes this one to Chase. And he's caught behind the line for a loss. Well, there was never a play in any playbook I ever saw designed for a lost yardage play when you throw the ball. But if there's any solace, at least it was first down. A couple more chances to make up for it. Everyone's prepped. It's second down now. Now it's Brown. Making defenders pay for trying to tackle it. And that's good yardage there with a new set of downs to boot. Hey, look, Kate, you can't just ask one tackler to go mano a mano and stop this guy. You've got to have the cavalry coming. One guy makes a hit, the others are there to clean up and pile on because one-on-one, -on -one, he's going to run right through you. First and ten now. Here's Burrow. They'll get this one to Brown. And he's going to be stopped at the 17-yard line. Translatable skills. That's what you call it. So effective as a runner, but those same traits that make him a great runner, adept to get in those yards, well, he translates it now as a receiver in the open field. Halfway to the marker. It's second and five. Burrow from the gun. That is a DB's best friend's pressure. That pressure earned that incompletion. They came in before he could find a target and hit him to alter that last second attempt to get rid of it. Last pass unsuccessful, and they have third down here. Burrow back to throw. Complete beyond the marker. And they get this down to the seven-yard line. It's a double-digit gain, 10 yards, and now they've got first and goal. I know the Combine tries to test everything it possibly can physically, but I don't know how you test courage at the Combine, because there's nobody defending you. Nobody wants to hit you. But that was the epitome of courage to make that in cut and make the catch. First and goal now as they try to pad this lead. To throw again, it's Burrow. The throw is caught. And he'll go down shy the end zone. They mark him at the four. Well, that's a pretty similar result to a first down run play. Moves it forward, keeps you on schedule, and makes second and third down a whole lot easier to manage. Still chances to get these final four yards. It's second and goal. Brown on the carry. And he barrels across for the touchdown. 
The Bengals have likely locked up the win right there. He would not be denied that close to the end zone, Brock. I think it might have taken five or six guys tackling him to keep him from diving across the line for six. Certainly a second effort touchdown, no question. The backs who become fan favorites, we've seen it through the generations, and they set the curve for their peers, are the ones who just fight through that stop. It will not be a denied of a touchdown. McPherson at the point after. Extra point set right down the middle. And the Bengals push their lead to 18. Here's McPherson on to handle the kickoff. On the return, here comes Davis. And he's going to make this to the 28 before going down. Drive starts out with a first and ten. Here's Herbert. He gets it to him on the screen. And he's out of bounds beyond the 35-yard line. These intermediate gains, that's the wheelhouse for these two to connect on. Start the series off well. And it sure keeps a defense on its toes in case they try to load up and just simply cover the receivers. Nice spot here for the offense. It's second and one. from the 37. That one falls to the turf, couldn't hang on. It's incomplete. Yeah, th this game, you just can't make it harder than it needs to be. Just get the catch first. Guarantee your yards, and then worry about escaping defenders after the catch. So after that prior incompletion, we've got third down. Herbert from the gun. He has the first over the middle. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. There's no question the greatest concern there was just getting the first down. You want a high percentage throw, and you're not really concerned about big yards. Well, the drag route was perfect. He comes open the short field. It's easy to zip that throw right in there and reset those chains. It's Herbert once more. And that's incomplete. No lucky there, too. Nearly picked up on first down. You feeling lucky? Well, do you? Well, he should because the quarterback got away with one right there. That was an easy pick dropped by the defense. All right, one more snap before the two-minute warning. Now Herbert again. That's knocked away by a defender, incomplete. No connection on the last play, and now it's third down. Herbert to throw once more. That one's cut on the left side off. And they take him down right along the 30. Timeout called by the Chargers. They're first. And they still have two available for them as we approach the end of this game. First and ten now from the 30. Herbert throwing again. Looking right, and he finds him. And they stop him. He's marked down along that 18-yard line. 12 yards on that play, and a good call nets him the first. Sure nice to see them looking for their tight ends in the passing game. Such great size to have out there. It really forces defenses to try to find a way to defend them, along with everybody else. First and ten. Here's Herbert. Into the end zone, but someone's able to knock it away. That's incomplete. How many?
many times do defenders hear from their coaches, read and react, read and react. You got to read where the quarterback's eyes are going, and then more importantly, you got to react as he begins to throw and knock that ball away. So after the incompletion, here comes the second down call. Shotgun snap to Herbert. This one is hit by a defender and winds up incomplete. Could not beat the defender there. So now it's going to be third and long. With all due respect to some of the great linebackers back in the day, to play the position today, man, you've got to be versatile. You can't just be a come up and stuff the run. You've got to play coverage. And these defenses more and more rely on you to break up throws just like that. Chargers get it back to within two possessions. Wow, just fantastic work there. Tiptoeing along the back line. The concentration was there. Great catch for six. Yeah, the concentration and the body control. I don't know how these receivers do it in this day and age. There's no space to work with, yet they have such an awareness to secure it first, to tap dance the line, and go get that touchdown. Dicker on now for the PAT. Right down the middle, it's good. And the Chargers make it an 11-point ball game. So even after the score, they're still down two possessions. Time not exactly on their side as they try this onside kick. And the Bengals' hands team does its job recovering that kick. No question they wanted the ball back late, but you don't see many of these recover by the kicking team in the NFL. You see even fewer recovered when they're actually expecting it like they certainly were right there. The Bengals and Joe Burrow all set to take over. for him from the 46. On the ground, Brown. And the defense gets there to force a small loss. L.A. uses a timeout here. It's second. As they'll meet and decide what to do on this second down. On third down, here's Burrow. Makes the grab and bounds left side. An excellent game, 20 yards there, and that's going to move the sticks. Just about every defensive coordinator worth his salt says two things in every production meeting. Number one, well, we got to stop the run. And number two, we got to take away the tight end. Well, good luck doing that. Defending a big guy who can move like that, it's a lot easier to talk about than to go out and execute. Victory formation here. Looks like they're going to take a knee on first down. Your favorite formation, right, Brock? The victory formation here as he takes a knee. This is situational football at its best. There's still some time left to bleed off the clock, but the really important thing here is you've got to bleed every second of that clock that you can. Lining up to take a knee on second down. Yeah. 
With a win in hand, he'll take the knee and let this clock run out. Nothing left to do now, Kate, but celebrate on one side and watch on hopelessly from the other. What a hard-fought effort to get to this spot. And now you can enjoy the victory. So the Bengals pick up the win in this one. And it was a game for fans of high-scoring football, wasn't it? I know Brock was enjoying seeing both of these offenses work and really not a lot to dislike from either group. Just one side working at a slightly better clip than the other. That was the difference in the win.